G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. Yes, it's cold and it's raining and I'm here to talk about AI and the future of photography. Now, obviously Canon has come along and done some really interesting things with the release of the R1 and the R5 II, including computational and AI computer learning technologies within the camera using their co-processor to run these functions along with some pretty interesting AF functions as well. All of this stuff's very exciting, but what it does do is it absolutely changes the face of photography. There's no question about it. Photography becomes a different beast as we have all of these sorts of tools. Now, of course, we live in a world where I'm pretty confident that Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, Leica, and so on, will continue to allow us to fully manually control our cameras. So I don't think anybody should be worried about the idea of computational AI, machine learning, taking over what you're doing when it comes to your photography today. But of course, it is a massive change. And I suppose there's something pure about film or pixels capturing light and then you deliver something from that baseline. I get that. I understand that. I'm part of that. I live that. And I've pursued that my entire career one way or another, either through film or lenses or sensors to try and get the type of performance that I'm after. I deeply respect the notion that if a computer is starting to think about how to change those things on our behalf and we have less and less control, that feels different. I get it. But I also get something else. I get the fact that I want the camera industry to be here for a long time to come. I want to be able to have interchangeable lens cameras that I can then do all sorts of interesting things with. And that's not an iPhone. I don't want my experience to end up being simply some form of iPhone. That'd just be the worst case scenario. Part of the problem that the camera industry, Nikon, Canon, Sony, Fuji, Panasonic, Leica, anyone else who I've forgotten, part of what they're experiencing is a need to keep new generations of photographers interested and joining us in what we love and what we do. And part of that, it's, it's just inevitable. As Johnny Ive, the previous head designer of Apple used to say, this design is inevitable. This is the inevitable next step. And without a shadow of a doubt, from my perspective, what we're talking about here is the inevitable next step. There will be more of this within our cameras, but I do think we'll be able to turn it on and turn it off. When it's turned on, it will help attract a new generation of interested photographers. Now, of course, we're always gonna have people who are interested in film, and then we'll probably have some people who are interested in cameras that don't have any AI or machine learning or computational stuff in them. And you might have to go back to a, a D3, a D4. I do think that DSLRs don't have any of that sort of AI, machine learning, computational photography within. It's a different paradigm. So DSLRs may well have a second coming, and that's fine. For the sake of the industry, I do think we do need to have things like inbuilt noise control, noise reduction, enlargements within the camera. All of these things are useful, and they all have use case potentiality. I don't think we should say no to it, because I think it's part of ensuring that what we love as a whole survives. And I want to see it to survive. I want it to outlive me. And I'd like to think that I've got at least another good three decades under my belt. Maybe four, maybe five. Who knows what technology will come. But I don't want it to be one decade. And look, I don't think that's the case. But as Johnny Ive says, this next step is inevitable. I don't think we should fight the future. I think we should embrace it. I think we should never forget that we can always flip our cameras to manual. That is absolutely always an option. 
It's the way that I shoot. It's the way that I've always shot when it comes to exposure. The exposure triangle still to this day is manually dialed by me in 99.9999% of occasions. Autofocus, well, autofocus up until uh, mirrorless was still me using single point. Now, obviously that's changed. I would say an extraordinarily high percentage of us are already using some of these computational and machine learned features. Focus probably being the biggest one we have today. I can speculate that there would be technologies and opportunities that we, the public, are yet to really fully understand what they are and what they could be and how they might help us. I do think with the launch of the R1 and the R5, I absolutely do think that with the current sensor technology, this is where we are. There'll be two tiers of sensors and it'll kind of depend on what sensor speed you want. But if you want a faster, higher megapixel sensor, it'll be 45 to 50 megapixels. And if you want a faster, lower, more affordable sensor size, that seems to be 24 megapixels. With the only real outlier right now being Sony with their 33 megapixel A7 IV. But that is a slower sensor. And as I've spoken about before, the actual pixel difference is under a thousand pixels difference. And when you put that on either side, it's under 500 pixels difference on either side. It's a very small percentage of the overall frame. Whether that sensor size gets repeated or not by Sony in an A7 V, hard to say. I'd be surprised if they step backwards. It'll be really interesting to see what they do. I, I just genuinely don't see that changing, one, unless there's a major sensor shift and somebody invents something new that they can mass produce. I'm sure there are new technologies out there, but it's a matter of whether they are mass producible at a price point where we can have something like a Z6 III we're shooting on tonight and it's only two and a half thousand US dollars. That's the problem. As this technology gets more fancy, like say in a red Raptor X global shutter 8K camera, the sensors are extraordinarily expensive and the yields are low. That's why they're expensive. It's really something to think about. Sensor technology in the near future, and maybe even longer, may not change much. So if you want to continue to get more out of your camera, in your camera, computers, AI, machine learning, computational photography, that may be the only place we're going to see significant change. And I have to say, enlarging my image in camera like the new Canons can do, that, that's, a, that's a big change. Now it's version one, it's doing it with JPEGs. But that's cool, that's a starting point. Otherwise, sensor-wise, we may not see a lot for a generation or two, who knows? We've certainly seen that Sony has had a go at global with the A9 III and well, we all know how that's landed, it's not for everybody. And without a shadow of a doubt, Sony would have given us absolutely the best of what they can do. That is what they're doing. They are pushing everything to the limit to deliver the first global sensor at that price point. If that's the cutting edge in that space, we've got a long way to go before global is in every camera. I wouldn't assume that A12 and that the Z92 are global. I wouldn't assume that. Canon have not done it with the R1. It's not global and it's only 24 megapixels. And dynamic range, high ISO performance, these are issues when we go faster and faster. A lot of trade-offs going on here. I think we can see from across the industry that we're leveling out when it comes to sensor tech. So these advancements, they've got to come somewhere else. Don't worry about whatever new computational AI, machine learning attributes come to your camera. Of course, you can turn them off. Of course, we're already using them when it comes to AF. But I think it's an important part of this industry continuing to thrive and move forwards. This to me is just the beginning of a conversation that I would love to start amongst our community. As I talked about in a previous video, what this is ending up creating is cameras that become ISO agnostic. They become dynamic range agnostic. They become pixel 
megapixel agnostic and potentially even autofocus agnostic. As we saw with the Canon technology, you can just tell it to find a face. You don't have to do anything. It'll just find a particular face. That's crazy. So this is the discussion. I would love to have a super conversation in the comments below amongst everybody. I look forward to your thoughts. And remember, all we need to ask for is that these technologies can be turned off if we want them to. Beyond that, I think we should embrace them for the future generations of photographers and also photographers who love kind of nerdy tech. I've got a foot in each camp. I love old school, but I do love technology and just the wondrous things that engineers and scientists and inventors, they can create. It's so exciting. The waves are crashing around me. It's, I, think, I think it's probably time to get out of the cold. It's been so good to see you. If this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.